Yes. Perfect. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the second session of this entire series where uh, <clears throat> we are looking at all the 15 out of the box models from AI Fabric. So, uh, just quick recap I know you all were there yesterday, but for new people, so yesterday we saw image moderation models where we saw image moderation and object detection model where we give uh, where we gave a live demonstration on building a bot for object detection model and we detected how many number of people are there in one image so that uh, model we have uh, you know shown yesterday and we has already uh, you know shared how you can go ahead and check the recording so that you can go back and watch this video and create such uh, you know content or create such use cases in your organization now today we are going to talk about moreover the second category which was about text analysis so now we are talking talking about obviously nothing but ai fabric so what we are going to do is let's navigate to restaurant feedback and let me navigate to ml packages i'm just showing you the packages right now so all of you must be aware of the packages uh, as i've shown you yesterday so let me again recap so this is one package which is uipath's own in-house package for document understanding and these are the open source packages now out of this we are today going to look at language analysis package so in language analysis package we have english text classification we have french text classification we have japanese text classification then we have language detection named entity recognition and sentiment analysis so overall, there are six models or six MLs uh, model machine learning models in this particular package. So earlier there were there was only English text and then language detection named entity and sentiment. But now recently UiPath has added French text classification and Japanese text classification. So it is not only uh, you know covering English text classification, but it is also covering French text and Japanese text. Now, text classification is one of the most used and one of the most, uh, you know, referred practice in machine learning developers, or you can say in data analytics or data scientists. Why is because most of the machine learning models or most of the predictions that we have to make is based on the current data. And from the data, what do we predict? Now, for example, Okay, let me give you an, uh, a basic example. So let me just simply jump here. First of all, let me tell you what is text classification. So text classification is actually a retrainable model. Now I told you the difference yesterday. A trainable model, uh, a non-trainable model is model where the model is pre-trained and you cannot retrain the model. But this model is completely retrainable. So you, you do not have anything which is pre-trained you simply have to train, add your data in the data set and you have to train this model. Then only this model you can use in your real time. Now this ML package uh, has to be retrained, uh, has to be retrained as I just said, and this model is a deep learning architecture for language classification. It is completely based on, uh, you know, this Roberta, a self-supervised method for pre-training natural language processing systems. Now, how accurate it is, we will come to that part how to apply it in real time. We will also look at it in today's session. Also, we have a GPU, which can be used for both of this. And this model is a retrainable. Why is because you can also retrain this model in a periodic basic. If you want to retrain the data, or if you want to add additional training to this particular model, you can do that with the English text classification. So what is English text classification model? This model takes input as a string. Okay, and it gives you output in format of JSON where you have prediction from the uh, predicted column and prediction column and you have confidence. So confidence gives you the total num uh, percentage of the accuracy with which the prediction is made. Now there are multiple use cases which we will come back to this use cases at the end of the session, but I hope you have an idea basic idea of what text classification is right now. Let me go back to AI fabric. So in this AI fabric, I just showed you English text classification. Similarly like that, we have French and Japanese. Now what is language detection? So language detection is a package out of this language analysis model, which as you can see here, which is open source by Facebook research. 
which supports 176 languages. You can actually predict up to 176 languages with this model. Now, what you have to do is simply you have to give input in the specific uh, you know, language that you want to predict and you will get output as the language name along with the confidence of the prediction that what is the uh, language type. So if I write it in Hindi, it will just give me languages Hindi with whatever confidence it is. So this model is again, one of the most useful model uh, in many organizations where international communication is first priority and communication is their core business. In that case, language predictions is highly used. And that is why this model also has very high demand in real time of machine learning and data scientists. The, obviously this model is not retrainable because you cannot retrain the model. It is already trained with open resource data and it is already trained with 176 languages package. You don't need anything else apart from that. I hope so. Now coming back to language analysis package. The next model is named entity recognition. Now what is named entity recognition? So this model returns a list of entities recognized in a specific text, which you give as an input. Now, remember in this package. So in earlier package yesterday, we saw the input was image and totally in this package input is going to be string every time it is text because this is a language analysis. So all the models in this package are moreover related to NLP, which is natural language processing. So this model returns a list of uh, entities recognition in a text. There are up to 18 types of named entities recognized and use the same output class. So this is the catalog, which is given. You can also open it in a notepad or you can also check this use case and you can check this particular description of named entity recognition, which is commonly used for benchmarking the task in academy. So please see if AF have documentation details and there are up to this classes. And now let's look at it. So this is the input description where input is nothing but a simple English text from which the entities will be uh, extracted like this. So this is the output where you have text and starting position zero end position 17. What is the type? What is confidence of it? Again, the next text and then what is the confidence? So you get the entities out of this particular string. So sometimes this model is used in high level NLP machines or high level NLP processes where we need to identify the entities out of a text. But this is on a very high level models, which uh, normally is not used in front model, but it is like more over like a back end model. So named entity recognition is also there in UiPath. And again, it is also non retrainable model, which has a version of 1.0. Now you do not need to train this model because it is already trained with 18 classes. Okay. So as simple as that yesterday, we just saw we used object detection without training simply like that. You can use these two models language detection named entity recognition without training. Now let us look at sentiment analysis or a sentiment analysis. So this model was also open sourced by Facebook research. It predicts the sentiment of a text in English language. So as of now, it is only available for English language sentiment analysis. Okay. The Predictions are categorized as very negative, negative, neutral, and positive and very, very positive. So you have total five different categories in under this sentiment analysis. Now sentiment analysis has very, very high level of use cases in the market. And if you can uh, go ahead and if you can check uh, recently, I also published one of the, uh, you know, blog on UiPath's uh, UiPath community blog portal, where the blog was all about the use cases of sentiment analysis, which we will also look at uh, in this word document. And at the end of the session, I will also share the link of that blog so that you can go through the blog and you can check all the use cases and you can maybe build one of them. Now again, sentiment analysis also takes, uh, takes input as string, which is simple English language text. And it gives you output as we saw the categories and with the category, it gives you the confidence of it. Obviously it is also non returnable model, but now we have version 2.0, which is more upgraded than the previous version of sentiment analysis. So I hope now you have an idea about all these three models 
which are non returnable so there is no much effort to uh, you know uh, build this model and create a ml skill the tough model is only english text classification because we have to retrain and this is a model which is uh, which needs a retraining right which needs training the data exactly that is why we are going to look at english text classification today and we will see how can we create a model with english text classification so let's go back to ai fabric and let's try to create a model with english text classification so before i go ahead and i start creating the model the first thing that you should have is data right so if you do not have test data then how are you going to train the model so the very first priority is test data now what is the requirement of a classification model so if you talk about any classification model and let's talk about only this english text classification so you need two columns so the first column could be anything for example let us take it as a uh, let's say service now tickets so if i have a service now ticket okay and this is my category so my service now ticket is let's say uh, i want new mouse so my category is going to be hardware right now just like this if your organization has or if your project has huge amount of test data in or historical data of service now or any itsm tool which has the simple english text and the category you can put this into columns and you can get entire test data and you can simply put that as an input for this english text classification now what happens from the next time from the next time even if you just enter that uh, my let's say keyboard is broken this model will automatically predict that the category is hardware or if you give training with hardware software network any category this model will automatically identify the category of it so this model works very specifically with only two columns as of now okay it does not work with more than two columns it works with only two columns where this is the column where you give your input data and this is the target column remember in machine learning language what you need to predict is called as target okay so this is your target column and this is your input column now let us go back to the official documentation of ui path for english text classification model so that we will understand it very clearly because the documentations are written really nice i do not want to create my own presentation for that so we will jump on english text classification and let me also share this link with you in chat so that you can also have it handy and you can also open it very quickly sorry i have pasted it here in chat section now in this text classification model what do we have is we have this is a generic retrainable model which we just saw input is input type is json input description is this output description is json file with class and confidence now <clears throat> what it needs so it needs csv file as an input where there is one input column and one target column so input column is by default considered as input and target column is by default considered as target okay so there are two input columns okay now once we have this csv you need one more csv which is training csv and testing csv and once you train the data you will get the output in this way and what are the environment variables environment variables is input column target column evaluation matrix csv name start index and end index just like that and these are the multiple artifacts so what do we need for training process we need train.csv we need validation.csv then we get train report pdf we get loss plot and we get metric plot once you train a specific model now let's go ahead and let's look at how to do it actually on ai fabric so what i will do is for that i will create a simple project <clears throat> let me give it here name so today we are going to work on a sentiment analysis for restaurant okay but for this i am not going to use sentiment analysis machine learning model 
I am going to use test data from Kaggle. So let me send this link to you in chat section so that you can also refer this on your screen. So this is the link for this Kaggle data set, which is of a restaurant sentiment analysis. Now, as you can see, this lady has written a blog for this uh, model. And here we have, so she has mentioned all the sentiment analysis and she has mentioned accuracy with all of them. So as you can see, accuracy is 77% with the, with the model of multinomial. Now with the model of uh, Bernoulli, she is getting accuracy of again 77. With the model of logical logistic regression, she is getting accuracy of 76.67. And yeah, so here she has mentioned all the models. So she has used naive Bayes, uh, multinomial naive Bayes, Bernoulli's naive Bayes and logistic regression. With, for this test data, which she has entered, she has got accuracy of 77% with naive Bayes, 77% with Bernoulli and 76% with logistic. Now can anyone predict how much accuracy I can get if I train the same data set with AI Fabrics text classification model? Only a person who is who has subscribed my YouTube channel might be able to answer. So how much accuracy I have got when I train the same data with UI paths, AI fabric, anyone in chat section. Okay. So Akash says 85%, Pooja says 77%. Okay. Any, any more questions, any more answers? Okay. 90%. Santosh is saying 90%. Ninety-eight percent. Sonali says ninety-eight percent. Okay, Sonali, you have so high expectations. Okay. Savari says eighty-five percent. Nidhi says eighty percent. Okay, so let's see who is close to the answer. Okay, so you have uh, all of you have mentioned your answers. Mohit says eighty-five percent. So all of you have mentioned your answers in the comment section or chat section. Okay, now I can say Piyush is watching my YouTube channel. So, <clears throat> so with AI Fabric, let me go back to AI Fabric and I have already trained this model for you. So you don't have to worry. I have got the accuracy of 95.8%, which is close to 96%. Now just think about it. One of you asked me a question, why to prefer AI Fabric components over Python components or open source Python components. This is the main reason because this is highly trained model, which gives you more accuracy because it has really nice, uh, uh, what you can say, data filtering options and classification options, because this is one of the best classification model of English text classification. If you can go to this particular link, you can also see my comment on this blog or in this uh, Kaggle uh, data set where I have mentioned uh, my comment here but that I've got 97.5% accuracy. So we can say Piyush has the correct answer. So what I did is I simply trained data with 18%, 20%. This is the pattern I used, okay? Now, how to do it? So let's go back on top on this particular link, click on the restaurant review.psv and here we have the data set. So let me go back on the sentiment analysis on this blog, you have this link data set, right? Click on this link restaurantreview.tsv. This is the link. So here you will see the data. What you need to do is simply download this data here. Okay, it is downloaded in TSV format. I will simply go ahead and I will uh, cut this data. I will paste it in the AI fabric. Let's say I will create a new folder, session two. Now what I will do is I will simply open this particular TSV format with Excel. So I will open my Excel file. I will say open a file, which is from this PC documents, AI fabric session two, all files. And this is the TSV file. Okay. So I went inside my uh, Excel and I opened this TSV format file from here selected it 
Now it is giving a delimiter something with Windows unc. I will say next. Okay. Uh, it is delimiter. Delimiter is tab here because tab is the tab is the main separator for the review and the response. I will say next, and I will say finish. So here you go. You will get this data, which is consisting of the reviews for this restaurant and whether the response is positive. Positive stands for yes or one. Negative stands for zero. So you can see here, crust is not good. Zero. Wow. Love this place. One. Simply like that. You have total one thousand one data, test data. So now tell me, if I have one thousand test data, one thousand rows of test data, what should be the percentage of my trading data, and what should be the percentage of my test data? Tell me. Anyone in chat section? Percentage ratio of test and train. Perfect. Eighty twenty. Always remember. <clears throat> now you will hear a lot of thoughts about this from multiple, uh, you know, machine learning developers or uh, people who are, you know, using data science. They will say seventy thirty, but I prefer eighty twenty. This is the standard, and this is most, uh, you know, appropriate way to split the test data in eighty and twenty. Eighty percent will be your training data. Twenty percent will be your test data. Similarly, like that, I have classified this all reviews. And I have converted this once to yes and zeros to no. How did I do that? So just uh, you know find yes. So replace yes with sorry replace one with yes. That's it. So you can say replace all. So just like that, now I have converted this data for my convenience, and that's it. Okay. Now, simply like that, I have created the test data, which let me show you. So let me go back to the downloads, and this is the test data: train cs train dot csv and test dot csv. So this test data, I am going to use, and I am going to pass it in my machine learning model. So let me go back. Let's go back to AI Fabric, and let us go back to AI Fabric model here. Create a project. Give it a name as restaurant. Okay. Now, uh, give any description. So, feedback, sentiment analysis. Say create. Now, I have already split this data into eighty and twenty percent. So, you can also do the same thing. Okay. And I have saved it in CSV file. How to save it in CSV file? You just have to control S and change the format to CSV. Now. i will go to data set i will say create new i need to create a folder called as train data and create the folder train data okay upload files click on drag and drop or you can click to upload so click here and uh, select the folder where we store the data which is in session 2 uh, so we created train right so train set we are uploading training set in the train data folder i will say upload i am uploading train set in training data let me go back uh, create new one so this is i'm going to call as test set i'm going to create a folder with the name of test set upload a file here which is test set and i'm going to just click on open and upload done so my data upload is done now my data set has two folders one is train set one is test set train set has uh, train set.csv And test it has test it dot csv. And what does this csv con, uh, consist of? So let me just show you simply. The csv is consisting upon input and target. Okay, so input is nothing but the same thing, right? The same feedback which we just saw. And the target is converted into yes and no. So one was converted to yes and zero was converted to no. Now once we uploaded this in our data set, what I do is navigate to ML package, go to out of the box models. and go inside language analysis and select this english text classification model and once i select this model i will simply click on submit and give it a name as restaurant and say submit done so now what i have done is i have submitted the ml package for ml package you do not need to indicate any data set or nothing like that so the first thing so we are going step by step okay Now look at this. UI path has also given you all the steps one by one. So it is as simple as that. We uploaded the dataset. We created the ML package. Now we will go to pipeline. 
So go to pipeline and click on create new. From the drop down, select. So there are three pipelines. Okay. Now, what is the difference between all these three pipelines? So train run will train the model, train the uh, train the data set using this model and will create a prediction model. Okay. And what evaluation run will do? So train run, we will give input as 80% data, which we separated out. And for the evaluation run, we will give the test data, which was 20% separate data, right? And then later on, when you want to uh, perform, uh, you know, uh, auto reading or automatic update in the training of this particular model, you can use full pipeline. Remember that, okay? As of now, I'm doing a train run. So I will simply select train run. I will select the package restaurant, which we just created here. I will choose the package major version, which is one minor version, which is zero. Choose the data set, which is train data. Now this data set, you have to select the folder, but the data set of the CSV will be selected from the data set. And in the parameters, let us navigate to the document. In this document, what was the parameter required? So navigate back to environment variable. The parameters required as input column. So default, it should be input. Okay. So my column name is already input. Where is that? Here it is. Its name is already already input, right? The name of the column. The name of this column is also target. So input column, I'm matching the requirement of default. Target column, I'm matching the requirement of default, which is target. If you want to give your own name, then you can simply copy this input column, come here in AI fabric and create the environment variable with input column. And if you have any other header name, you can give that, that's a ticket. So you can do that. But I don't have to do that is because I have matched all the uh, default requirements of the input column and target column. Now we don't need CSV name, start index and index that is not needed. So simply let's go ahead and say, we don't have GPU, run now and say create. That's it. Now, what did we do? We simply created a train pipeline with a version of 1.0 and packaging has started. Now, how it will look, so it will take a lot of time right now. So we will quickly jump on the model, which is already trained. This one. Now, how it will look after completion? So it looks after completion like this. So train, it looks like this successful. It completed in 23 minutes. So it will take another 23 minutes to complete. And then you have to run evaluation pipeline in order to run the test data. Okay, selecting the text, test data. Now once you run evaluation, it will take a couple of seconds. It took 194 seconds for me. And it give me, gave me accuracy of 0 0.958, which is 95.83%. Now, what happens once you train a model? See, I'm telling you everything in very deep. I'm not jumping onto workflow very quickly. I do not want to do that. I want to explain you this concept very, very slowly. Digest it. So what you do, once you train the model, <clears throat> what happens in background? It creates, click on details here, once it is trained, it is, as you can see, it is successful. Come here and it creates a restaurant review dot zip one GB of entire model. Simply click on download and keep this downloaded file with you because this is the entire trained model based on your data set, which you can later on upload as a custom machine learning model. Now, you know what I'm talking about? Let me go back to AI fabric. So I will go back here. Now, I don't know if you remember, but I told you in ML packages, you can also upload a custom zip file, right? Upload a zip file, your own package. So once you train your data, you already get a zip file package, which UiPath allows you to download. Isn't this wonderful? So this is not only kept on your cloud location, but it is also allowing you to download. So you can keep backup of each and every machine learning model. Isn't this wonderful? Now, once you take the backup of each and every model, you can also take the result.json file with it. What were your results? And you can also see all the logs right here below this. So this is great. Now, once your model is trained in the pipeline, 
with train, you run evaluation pipeline with the test data selected. And once you select the test data, what you will do is you get the status as successful. Okay. And you get the accuracy of the model. Now it is not needed that you should use the same model, which I have used. You can also select your own model. If you have any test data with you and you can share it on sub, uh, social media and you can share us the, uh, you know, how accurate it was for you. But once you get the evaluation, go to details. And in the evaluation, you will see only results.json and you can see all the logs. Now, once that is also done, so we will go step by step. So once data set is done, once ML package is done, pipelines are executed and done, then we will click on ML skill and we will create ML skill, which connects with your orchestrator. Now we have seen yesterday the process of creating an ML skill. This one is currently available, but now, now remember the trick here is while creating the ML skill for such models. Okay. So I will give it a name as let's say restaurant. I will choose the package. If the package is not found is because I have already created the skill for this one. So that is why it is not allowing me to again, create one more ML skill. So once you do that, what happens is it allows you to select. Now let me go back to the model, which I trained. There was a model review. Okay. This one. Now remember, so once you train the model, the version of the model will be 1.0. And once you start evaluation, the model version changes is because you're testing this particular model on top of newly trained model. And that is why while you create evaluation pipeline, you will select the top version is one and the lowest version also as one, which will create the model as 1.1. And that is why in my ML skill, my version of the model or ML skill is also 1.1. I hope you're clear with this. Okay. Any confusion here till now? Any confusion? I hope not. Okay, cool. So. Uh, Nagarjan has a question, how accuracy is calculated because we provide both input and target values in the test data. Yeah. So accuracy is calculated Nagarjun based on, so what happens? The machine learning model trains itself learning from the previous experience. Now the data, which you gave as 800 rows, it learns all that data and it also learns the category of the data. And next, what it does in the evaluation pipeline, it tries to uh, predict automatically within the bot itself that it tries to predict based on each and every input. It tries to predict whether the, uh, the category written in front of it is correct. Is it matching? So if I have given, let's say 200, uh, data for my testing or evaluation out of 200, if around 195 data has matched the exact column, which is written in front of it, that is what gives you the accuracy. So this is how accuracy is calculated. Okay. Now we are good with this. So uh, let's jump on quickly. So as we have this model available for us, let's jump on quickly to the workflow. So I will jump on my workflow here. And what do we need to do? So this is the UI path studio, which I opened already opened, And I have created a process with the name of restaurant feedback. So how do you create that? Simply click on home, click on process and create new process. All we know how to create a UI path process. Now, once we create a process, <clears throat> we need to take one package or download one package, which we saw yesterday. The name of the package is ML skill. So we will download this package called as ML from official. So UI part dot ML services dot activities. Once you download this package, the second package you need is web. So you need UI path dot web dot activities because we need to deserialize the JSON, right? That's why. So we have uipart.web.activities also. Now what we will do this is as simple as that. So simply what we will do is we will take one input dialogue right now. Okay. We will ask for feedback. So the title of this input is 
feedback label is please enter your feedback here okay and the feedback we get in a variable called as feedback as simple as that okay once we have the feedback we will drag here ml skill activity just below it now i told you yesterday we have to refresh it if you have any new ml skill available it will show you in the drop down so we have restaurant review right here first of all before going ahead with the execution we will click on test skill and we will test it so let me just enter something uh i will say taste was good okay let's see so it is a positive sentence and definitely it will it should give me prediction as yes it is positive with the confidence of 100% i i will enter some negative sentence so uh i do not like the ambience so if my spelling is spelling of ambience is wrong just let me know so it's about restaurant so i just made a comment on ambience and the prediction is no with the confidence of almost 99.9% so the data is justifying the percentage of uh, you know accuracy it is given while it was trained now let us give a neutral comment so uh, i will just simply say food was okay so it is definitely a positive comment yes with the accuracy of 98% and this is how it is identifying each and every input along with prediction and confidence now let me copy this output because we are going to get the output in this format so let me copy it in a notepad close this one now we will give input which is feedback which user is entering from the input dialog we will create output here called as json response okay and we will now deserialize this json response so these to deserialize we saw yesterday we will use deserialize Okay, I do not have the web package. Is it? Oh, sorry, I forgot to install the web package. So, I will install the package called as uipart dot web dot activities. Install it, save it. Okay, now what I will do is I will drag the deserialize JSON activity package. So, sorry, activity deserialize JSON. so the string is json string is json response and the json object i will call as json object itself okay then now how do i get this two values separate prediction and confidence we saw yesterday right so we will just copy this prediction right here in the assign activity i will simply say so i will create a variable called as prediction and my prediction is json object double quotation json field dot to string we will take one more assign activity here where we will say confidence okay and again json object here we will say confidence exactly just like it is mentioned in the output okay dot to string simple and once we do that we will try to give a message box to user so message box will be the prediction of a uh, feedback entered is okay plus and we will say prediction dot to string the prediction is already string no issues and plus the confidence of or you can say the accuracy of prediction is you can say accuracy what what, what did you say confidence right yeah confidence that's it so we attached a message box also after this particular model okay piyush is asking what will be its response if we give something which is not a feedback probably like i want to watch a movie okay let's try to do that so 
it depends on the test data honestly it depends on the test data how you train it so you can say i want to watch a movie but it is not a relatable uh, text but it will definitely give you some of the prediction either yes or no so see it is a neutral prediction with the confidence of 50% so it is not even saying that it is a 100% uh, you know positive sentence but it is also not a negative sentence so it is giving it as yes with 50% uh, accuracy which means it is neutral sentence okay because there is no negative uh, artifact to that particular sentence i hope it i hope it answers your question piyush so once this is done now what we will do is we will simply run this particular model and i will say run so once it runs please enter your feedback here so i will enter my feedback okay my feedback is uh, i think the restaurant needs to improve food quality i hate it chinese food here and i will say okay so a person is saying that now you can see the prediction of this feedback entered is no that means it is not good feedback and the accuracy of the prediction is 99% negative so this is good now you can also put it in a loop if you want to or you can just simply try to run this same model again and let's try to run it for one positive feedback here so let's say i actually like pizza i will refer my friends okay so a person like pizza and he's saying that he will refer the friends the feedback is yes with the accuracy of 99.9% so our model is working so great till the moment right so this is this is wonderful nagarjun has a question if my accuracy get reduced on a long run then what frequency i can retrain the model again is there any time for retrainable models exactly nagarjun so uh, as a data scientist <clears throat> what is the best uh, practice that you can follow is to retrain model every end of week so this is the uh, this is the standard uh, i'm i'm telling you that every week you should retrain the model but some of the organizations want to make sure or their entire business is on top of the feedback from customer then for those organizations you have to train model on the daily basis so every day you have to retrain the model and upload a new package retrain model upload a new package this is a cycle for the organizations which are heavily depending upon this machine learning uh, artifact and if you are not heavily depending upon this machine learning part you can also do it on the monthly basis or weekly basis this is how you can do it i hope that answers your question nagarjun akash is saying i tried using j object but was not successful which data type are you using for deserialized json activity so uh, akash uh, i told you you have to download one package which is uh, uipath.web.activities once you do that uh, here in deserialized json the type argument i'm showing you is newtonsoft.json.linkq.j object note it down if you want to so this is newtonsoft.json.linkq.j object okay now uh, so this is this is like a json object if you want to know this uh, this version of this variable this is a j object akash okay perfect uh, piyush is saying can we train this model for more than two target values uh piyush more than two target values goes in a different category of classification models okay it is uh, more over like a hybrid model or more over like a model which is into rainforest uh, you know uh, 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 machine learning model but we are using here purely classification of english text classification which only allows you to select one input data and one target column now we will jump on to where we need more than two uh, input data or more than Uh, one input data and single target column we will look at that when we jump on to tpot models okay now once this is done uh, i can also refer you piyush so if you want to predict two target columns you can create two models any day you have four machine learning models right i mean four capability of creating four ai robots you can do that so once this is done now how else you can play around with this model okay 
So you can also take the input from user directly as an argument with the name of feedback. Let's say, so you create a argument called as feedback. Okay. And you create it as in argument and your prediction is, let's say out. So I will delete the feedback variable from here and I will delete the prediction variable also from here. So feedback is input prediction is output. If you can create this model in such case in just like this, I will delete this message box. And if I say I publish this particular package, okay. I publish this package with the name of restaurant feedback to my orchestrator. And let me go back. Now I'm just showing you what else you can do. And it is going to be really, really interesting. Believe me. So I will go to the orchestrator. I just published a package from my studio. That's it. I did nothing different. So I simply clicked on publish and I published a package to orchestrator because I'm connected. I will create a process. So in order to create a process, uh, let me go to automations, click here, create a new process. Name of the package, which we just uploaded is restaurant feedback. Version of the package is there. Environment is personal laptop, job priority normal. Input is feedback, output is prediction. And uh, yeah, that's it. So let's say create. So I created a process for that. Okay. And now what you can do is go to admin and you can actually create. Okay, where is that? Mm, yeah, perhaps. So. So you can actually create an app for your particular workflow. Now this app will take input from user on the UI path app platform. Okay. So how do you do that? So let's say uh, click on create new and if you say create application called a restaurant review and say create, what you can do is right, right, right. So what you can do is you can simply add a control with the input type of text here. I can drag a, drag a text area, which will, uh, so I will have to click here in the restaurant review, click here plus uh, select process in the UI path experts. I will simply say next. So in default, I have a process called as restaurant review. I will select this process. Okay. And uh, I have the parameters and blah, blah, blah. And coming back to the main page layout. What I did is if I want to add the value binding, I can simply give input as feedback here for this input text data. I will add one more control, which is going to be a button here. Okay. And for this button also, I will have to add the value binding. So what I will do is I will simply go here. I will say <clears throat> value binding. So not the value binding. So we have to create a rule. If this button is clicked, what do we need to do is start the process. So this process we need to start and we need to start it as let's say attended, unattended, however you want unattended, let's say. And uh, that's it. So just close. We gave a rule. Okay. And uh, once you do that, so you can also add one more control, which is for output to display it, which could be header or which could be label. So I will just drag a simple label here and let me, let me create a, <clears throat> let me add a value binding for that. So the label will include this out prediction variable. Okay. I can simply save this particular uh, simple form just like that. You know, I can simply say preview. So I'm just, I'm just creating a sample app. Okay. So it will be, you'll be able to enter the uh, feedback, click on the button and you will see the output in the label. So let us say publish. I'm creating it very simple. I'm not, I'm not changing any, anything. I'm also introducing you to UiPath apps. Okay. Within this period of time. So Go back to apps and uh, let's say, okay, let's say run. And what do we do is you basically give here input. So let's say I like the food and I clicked on the button. 
this will automatically trigger the bot from the workflow okay and it will show you the prediction instead of that label so restaurant feedback you can see last less than 20 seconds ago so 20 seconds ago it ran and you can see the prediction right here which is yes okay so isn't this wonderful what we did is we simply integrated three top applications of uipath which is ai fabric studio pro and uipath apps within 20 minutes now tell me did you require any python scripting for machine learning no did you require any coding language for creating the workflow no or did you require any ui development knowledge to create this application no so this is what we call as end to end product where you have machine learning as a integration studio as bot build and the development or for ui you have this ui path apps okay yes you can deploy this app on users machine uh, where you can also uh, you know nidhi you can also install this application as a windows application you can also use it as mobile application there are a lot of features of this ui path apps we will deep dive into the apps also in upcoming sessions of ui path community so stay tuned with the community and you keep keep an eye on the upcoming sessions we will also look into brief of ui path apps i'm just giving you a simple simple use case right now which is very simple i just build a saw small app which took my input and if i just say here or uh, let's say i do not like the pizza so i if i say click on button look at this robot here it is running can you see it has started the process and just 5 seconds ago the process ran and you get the output as no so as simple as that we simply created a bot which uh, you know which took input data from our english text classification we created the process in ui path studio we published it to orchestrator and we created app to visualize the answer on screen where the background is machine learning so this is how english text classification works i hope you will go ahead and you will try to see that so we have multiple use cases for english text classification such as content tagging tagging for news classification where you have you can tag a category of news for multiple news uh, where you can have the huge amount of test data you can get it from anywhere and you can tag those news and you can get a classification of news okay uh for example let's say iphone launch uh, uh, ios iphone launch new product so you can automatically the news will be tagged under uh, technology section it is like that so identifying category of service now incident based ticket description which i just give you gave you an this uh, information overview it will replace your l1 support search engine optimization uses mostly text classification if you have gone on let's say netflix and if you start watching a specific uh, movie or specific category of or journey uh, then what happens you get recommendation of the similar type of data similar type of movies that is nothing but classification personalization most of the personalization models or personalization seos uses text classification behind the scene okay uh, so identifying panic situation from conversation conversation monitoring on the social media so you can put or government can use this particular uh, you know technique or text classification models with training huge amount of uh, you know abusive words or uh, panic situation words and government or anyone who is monitoring the social media can identify any panic situation within few minutes within few seconds before it spreads okay so actually this is being currently done uh, in many of the top end organizations like facebook whatsapp so this uses nothing but text classification which is highly trained for panic situations okay so we can also use that uh, if you if you have any use cases like that we can also use use it for categorization categorization of item which we submit for cost estimation to an auction house so auction house uh, can take an input data where user writes a lot of historical information about their product or their item and we can classify that item based on the category of that particular item we can do that again we have a stop clickbait model where you can use uh, you know we can use a model which identifies all the keywords which are clickbait websites or clickbait content 
and we can avoid that we can uh, you know we can avoid clicking on that particular links so we can train that model and we can use it so these are some of the awesome wonderful use cases of english text classification and uh, so let me share you also the link in some time uh, for the uh, sentiment analysis um, blog which i wrote for uipath community i have talked a lot thank you so much for watching this entire session now we are open for questions if you have any So, anyone has any questions? Oh, uh, uh, Nisar Siddesh here. Yes, Siddesh. Oh, uh, just one question. You know, uh, you you told us that you know during that evaluation uh, package that you created, and that version uh, you said that it is one point one, right? So that is something uh, like we have the control over selecting the version, or it is by default that we get it one point one. or we can set it 1.2 2.1 uh, anything no actually actually let me show you so i can so i can show you very easily i mean uh, let me go back to ai fabric give me one second let me share my screen so we already we already created one pipeline right so let's let's go yeah. to the pipeline check if i can show you we created one pipeline for restaurant uh, the pipeline is still active okay is because we are only 30 minutes away it will take even couple of more minutes like 4 to 5 minutes to train this model so once this is successful i can show you actually so what happens you remember when we select this uh, pipeline let's say evaluation uh -huh. okay choose package uh, choose major version 1 in the minor version you, you are only seeing zero right right now right. yes so what will happen once your training model is completed it is successful you will also see option of one year okay one and zero So in that case, you will select one in that okay. case, because you need to select the trained model and then you need to predict it, right? That's okay. All. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Got it. Great. Hi Nizak, Sabri here. Uh, so I have a one question on you. Uh, so you you manually did this process, right? You manually trained the data, uh, but I want to schedule this uh, uh, training process on a, a daily basis. Means uh, then, how can I do that, uh, uh, Nizak? So for that, what you have to do is let me show you. So are you able to see my screen? Ah yes, yeah. So for that, what you have to do is you have to create uh, this upload file. Do you see upload file option in ML package, right? Yeah, yeah. This upload file has option which data set you want to up append. What is the file name? Okay, what is the local file path of it, right? Okay. And okay. what is the status code? So what you do is you ideally you cannot manually, I mean you cannot automatically train the model again. Okay. but what you can do is you can keep on uploading this data to a specific data set which is on ai fabric data set okay and what will happen if you schedule your full pipeline so let me go back to the pipeline so that i can show you so if you go here if you see full pipeline okay if you select full pipeline in full pipeline what happens you can choose the package you can choose the major version minor version now remember this this is input data set do you see yes yeah so this input data set you will give here in ui path in this data set path which will be keep on updating continuously okay and you will select the evaluation data which is going to be constant and now you will say recovering recurring or time based uh, execution for this one which will run on a specific time or you can put it as a recurring for <clears throat> you know for every uh, every sunday or let's say you can also use your cron expression here and you can train this particular full pipeline to run every week or every day or every twice a day just how you want it okay. and you will keep on updating only one input data in that got you nisha thank you so much oh, man yeah thank you so nisar i have the same uh, similar question on that one so when you say uh, you can upload your file so if you keep uploading the files there will be multi files right so then we can we have to select each no, no, file no. or so So what happens? What you do is whenever see, ideally, uh, uh, I have not used it, you know, practically during this. I mean, for this specific model, but I've used it in multiple Python scripts. So how it works? Uh, let me tell you. So what you do is 
you have a single file here with the name of let's say test it right right nidhi right yep yeah so we have a single file with the name of test it okay now what happens in my local machine so do you have also have option to select the local file you see here in my yep. local machine i will keep on appending the new data in this file name in the local machine okay and Got that it. is just append it in the similar file always so what okay. your full pipeline does is it always refers to a single data set and what happens your model gets retrained on the newly uploaded data and uh, so once it's re retrained with this file let's say you have the test set 1 here so once it's retrained so the data is going still going to be there so uh, then we have to like how we are going to refresh this file so so you do not refresh it it automatically gets uh, appended once you run this so once your activity comes across this upload file right this upload right. file activity this upload file activity will automatically append the data to that particular uh, data set so this data so set. it means like uh, the model is going to train on the basically like it's taking the old data set and it's appending with the new one so it's training exactly. let's say earlier i have 100 so now it's like next week 200 so it's again going to retrain the data on the 200 not 100 is already trained and is taking the next 100 right exactly exactly you got the exact point okay so like in case we want to avoid that since it's going to take longer time to train the more data we have it's going to take longer and mm -hmm. the data is all model is already trained do we have the option which you showed earlier like we can create the zip file download that one so next time when we want to train the data we just upload that zip file and retrain with the new data so you can also do that so that's why i was downloading this particular file i don't know if it's download complete or not so let me check the downloads one second uh yeah i think the download is completed so so now let me expand this particular model for you okay so i can just simply expand it to you so in this model what happens idea is so let's go back to this one so once you train your model once right nidhi right what happens yep. is you get this model every time once you train it okay now right. full pipeline just appends the new data and retrains the model and uploads a new version of it automatically right now look at this if you want to download this you get this folder structure where you get main python train.py training wrapper okay where you get uipath.core so this is helping you to connect with uipath here you get I'm sorry here you get the ai fabric libraries so these are all the libraries which you need for retraining a particular model right this is the pre trained model okay which is this one you see uh, pytorch model you see this dot bin so this is being published uh, any of the pickle method uh, or you can say this is being uh, you know exported with any of the pickle method this is the retrainable model so basically this only appends you do not have any other option to append the excel data here in the machine learning model that you download so the best right. way so yeah so that is basically way, trained right already this model is the zip file is already trained on the old data exactly. so we need not to worry about retraining that one so we can just train again train with the new data only right so that will save exactly. us time yeah that saves us time that saves us a lot of okay. time and ideally i would prefer to do that rather than uh, doing it this way right so the this is better way i mean to save the timing right if you upload exactly. the zip file and then okay and also you. you have you have maintenance on top of what updates that you are delivering so you do not know any sudden update goes and anything goes wrong right you also yeah. keep track of that so is uh, just one more question so is there any drawback you see any negative effect of training the data with larger data set or do we need to be careful when we retrain the uh, like the out of box model or anything do we have to keep anything like uh, in mind like uh, any specific data set it should be good or bad is there anything like that so see uh, yeah uh, i have a recommendation for what you asked uh, see one thing the less amount of data it is the higher will be the accuracy for you okay but the prediction might might not be that accurate is because you are training very less amount of data the more amount of data you put into training the more diverse your application or the more versatile your model becomes and it can predict even better even though accuracy is lesser than 90% let's say it is 87% but your model has more accuracy or more experience it is similarly like training a small kid 
if i train a small yeah. person or a small kid till 10th standard he will be able to answer uh, most of the questions that i ask right maybe his score is less but the same kid if i ask the questions when he is in fourth standard he will not be able to answer all the questions jaise ye log mein hai ye ha ye ye digital hai hello who is on mute who is unmute apart from nidhi and me please mute so i hope i hope i answered your question nidhi yep yep no totally yes thank you any more question guys so any any questions so go ahead try to create your own model and try to train your own data now i have uh you know gone ahead and have shown you a really really nice and simple way of training the text classification model i expect you guys to train your own data and come up with wonderful use cases because there is awesome use cases here which you can do and which with which you can utilize in real time so see you guys in next session which is going to be so which is going to be soon <laughs> i really don't